So you've got a Volkswagen Group 1.9 TDI engine and you're looking to put that little bit more power in it. You've got a really good engine. The 1.9 TDI is still regarded as one of the most reliable and trustworthy engines that the Volkswagen Group have produced over the years. Even better than the later 2 litre TDI which replaced it, which has been dogged by many different niggles and problems, most of which have now been ironed out. Um, but we've got other videos dealing with the 2 litre TDIs. So we're going to talk about two versions of the 1.9 TDI. There's the pre Pumpadusa version and then there's the one that had the Pumpadusa injection system added um, which offers greater flexibility and more tuning potential. We're going to talk about the best and most significant upgrades for your 1.9 TDI. So most of the 1.9 TDI units had Bosch injectors and a Bosch ECU. So that's good tried and tested technology that works really, really well. And the Bosch ECUs are very, very protective over the engine. So it's hard for things to go wrong electronically within the engine without the ECU cutting in and forcing a limp home mode. So you can do a lot to these engines to increase the power. But what's the most significant thing you can do? Well, it has to be a remap. So if you car was made after the year 2000, it's quite easily mappable via the OBD2 port. But cars before 2000 really require a bench flash and there's a little bit more work involved in getting a, a map to take on the ECU. So power figures from the engine range from about 90 horsepower to about 150 horsepower from the factory. And remapping these all see pretty good gains. The um, TDI 90 can map to about 116 PS. Just taking a, a mid-range power figure, the TDI 110, that'll map to about 143 PS and the PD 140 and 150 will see you hit around about 170, 180 PS when it's been mapped. So there's a lot of potential just within the standard engines and it shows just how strong these blocks are. And people that have had maps done on these cars generally report better fuel economy as well as all that extra power. So be very careful with your map. You don't want to go too aggressive. You certainly don't want to make it sooty and smoky. So so on the 1.9 TDI, if you want more power than you would get with just a map, you have to look at changing out the turbo unit. And there's a few different options and upgrades available. Obviously, the lower powered engines tend to have a smaller turbo and more limited fuel injection systems. So if you're interested in turbo upgrade options for your 1.9 TDI, we've got a list of the most popular ones that members and visitors to our site have found work really well at the end of this video, around about the eight minutes, 40 second mark. So if that's why you came here, you might wanna skip ahead and just review that. Otherwise stick around and we'll go through all of the other options for getting more power out of your 1.9 TDI. So if you've got the lower powered 1.9 TDI, uprating it to the 140, 150 engine version of the injectors and the fuel pump will give you a lot more headroom. But there's also other upgrades that you can apply to the car to lift the fuel supply further. So the injectors on the PD 130, the 140 and the 150 are generally good for around 240 horsepower before you need to replace them, before they start topping out. The smaller engines will certainly need beefier injectors and a beefier fuel system to tolerate any anywhere approaching those power figures. One thing to watch when tuning the 1.9 TDI, particularly on the lower powered engines, is the head bolts. They can actually break causing the head to lift. They can stretch slightly as well, which are neither good characteristics. So fitting stronger bolts, those from the 150 are typically a cheap replacement upgrade option that you can go for. If you've increased power by about 50 horsepower, it's strongly recommended that you get a hard pipe kit, which can contain that boost more easily and you reduce the risk of having some kind of boost leak somewhere in the system. So most of the 1.9 TDI turbos were essentially the same but there are differences in the downpipe design and the manifolds that attach them to the engine and some of the other components particularly if the engine was transversely mounted or it was an inline engine. So don't get caught out you might think you're buying a 1.9 TDI turbo but there were still some differences depending on the applications so check that it will fit your specific model of car before you buy a 
their kit and commit to it. It's also worth looking at the intercooler, the factory spec intercoolers on the 1.9 TDIs in most cars are somewhat lacking. You can go a long way to improve the intercooler. Now bear in mind that changing the intercooler doesn't add power, but it allows you to get your power delivered for longer periods of time. So as the intercooler warms up, it stops becoming as effective at cooling that charge of air that's going into the engine. And that's really where you start losing power. So if you do lots of spirited driving or you're frequently exploring the upper thirds of your RPM range, and let's face it, most of our viewers and most of our website visitors do that, you really need to uprate the intercooler. So fitting a larger front mounted intercooler is usually the solution. And it might in some cars require a little bit of modification to the front bumper, but that would just make sure that you're not losing power unnecessarily with a very restricted intercooler that's warming up too quickly. So intake and exhaust upgrades on the 1.9 TDI, do we recommend them? Well, from a pure power point of view, we don't. The 1.9 TDI engine has a very good exhaust system and intake system in most applications. There's probably a few exceptions out there, but generally speaking, the Volkswagen Audi group have done a good job at supplying more than enough air to the engine and carrying the exhaust gases away from the engine when it's finished its burn cycle. So adding an induction kit or a sports exhaust won't really increase power at all. You won't notice a difference because the stock setup is quite good. Even when you've tuned it, you'll find that the stock system can actually cope pretty well with those upgrades. So I would recommend though that in some of the engines you get the port size enlarged and just make sure that the head is flowing correctly because that can be a little bit of a bottleneck in some of the 1.9 TDI engines for those projects where you're trying to extract every extra horsepower that you can. But for most people, that's just an unnecessary expense and the gains that you see will be negligible. When I added a panel air filter to my TDI engine, I didn't notice any more power, but I did notice that when you lifted off the throttle, the engine kept its speed for longer. It didn't seem to bog down as quickly. And subtly, I think that probably helped my fuel economy a little bit. So I fitted a K and N cotton gauze panel air filter. They've not paid me to say this. That's just one that I've bought myself, I've used, and it seemed to be quite effective. But bear in mind that aftermarket air filters and performance filters will not filter as effectively as the OEM paper filter. So there's a little bit of a sacrifice there. You're getting a little more crud and gunk into the engine. So changing the oil more regularly makes a lot of sense, especially on a tuned 1.9 TDI. So with the exhaust, it seems when you put these on the dyno, in most cars, the stock exhaust can cope well to about 240 horsepower. Then you start seeing a little bit of a reduction in power. Typical problem areas in these is the headers and the DPF filters and the catalysts if you've got them fitted to your kilo model of 1.9 TDI. So fitting a higher flowing sports alternative can make a big difference. Don't remove them, don't delete EGR, don't delete DPFs, don't remove catalysts because it's not legal in pretty much every area. And the gains you get are just not worth it when you think about an alternative sports version and the benefits that that offers. So if it's legal in your area to swap these devices for a sports alternative, it makes a lot of sense to do so. But again, I would probably only do that if I was actually needing to replace an exhaust system. I wouldn't go out of my way to just do it for the sake of it. The clutch is also a common problem area on the 1.9 TDI. As they get older, they start to slip a little bit. And when you've remapped it and you've increased the power significantly, that's often enough to push an old worn clutch over the edge so it can no longer cope. So it makes a lot of sense to just uprate the clutch with a slightly firmer version. So I don't recommend converting the dual mass flywheels to single mass flywheels. The engine is diesel and it by very nature has a lot of vibration and the dual mass flywheel does a lot to keep those vibrations at bay. So I wouldn't personally recommend touching the flywheel. The factory setup seems to work quite well. If you wanted a competition 1.9 TDI, then you might want to go slightly light in choosing a dual mass flywheel, but it's probably an expense too far for most people. So there's quite a few decent turbo upgrades around. Um, we just flag up some of the most popular ones that our members have fitted to the 1.9 TDI. There's obviously other units out there, um, but these ones we know work and they generally come in, in a kit with all the supporting parts and a lot of thought has gone into the design of these turbos. You've got the GTD 2872VRK, which can see power figures of around 375 to 400. So that's more than ample on a 1.9 TDI engine. Then you've got the GTB 2260EK, which tops out at around 350 horsepower, and that'll give you 35 PSI of boost at about 2,800.
100 RPM, which is a nice spot in the RPM range to have that amount of boost. We've also got the GTB 2056 VK, which is a very popular unit that will generally flow well to about 300 horsepower, and that will give you about 34 PSI at 2750 RPM. So that's a slightly lower peak power point in the RPM range, making that turbo ideal for everyday driving and for towing, for caravans, that sort of thing. That's where you want the power slightly lower down in the RPM range. Then we've got the GTB 1756 VK, which tops out at around 250. So the power seems a lot down on the other turbos, but looking at the point it delivers the power, this happens at 2650 RPM and you get about 34 PSI of boost. So although the turbo's headline power figure is much lower than the others, it's probably the best choice for most drivers that are, that are just seeking more flexibility in the power delivery and they want that low end fast spool up that you would get. So if you're prepared to do a little bit more work on your 1.9 TDI to just fit a different turbo, it, this would involve changing the pipe work and a lot of the other ancillary components that drive the turbo and supply the air to the engine. You've got the GTB 1749V, which produces up to 205 horsepower at just 1,900 RPM. There's also the GTB 1756V, which is good for around 225 horsepower. And there's lots of other hybrid turbos around that use components from these popular turbos and they'll deliver a, a fairly flexible 240 horsepower pretty much across the rev range. So work out where in the rev range you want your power on your 1.9 TDI engine and choose a turbo that can suit that. Once you've had the turbo fitted, make sure it's carefully mapped and that the fueling is sufficient to supply enough fuel to match the air that's going into the engine. And you'll have a really sparkling performing 1.9 TDI. You you will get traction issues around about 200, 225 horsepower. The engine's quite heavy, so the traction issues tend to happen higher up in the RPM range and the speed range than you would get in other cars, but you will still get traction issues. So if you're experiencing that, look at the drivetrain, particularly the differential. If you get the differential uprated, that will go a long way to making sure you keep the power down, especially in wet and gravelly conditions. So it's worth noting that the turbos will often require conversion version to vacuum actuators and the VNT system needs to be set up correctly. There's a little bit of an art in setting that up properly, but once you've got it spot on, you, you really are there in the sweet spot of power delivery. So just to summarize what we've said here, the remap is the most significant power gain you can get. If you want more power on your 1.9 TDI, you need to look at the turbo and on the smaller engine versions, you certainly need to increase the fuel delivery, the fuel system, the injectors and the fuel pump. If you want more power out of it, it requires a a little bit more work looking at the flow rate into the engine. So we hope this has given you a really good overview of 1.9 TDI tuning. We've got lots of in-depth articles on our site that go into much more detail on the 1.9 engines, the very different flavors of engine that have come out with each successive generation. So if you want more information, please visit our site. There's links at the bottom. Stay tuned. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. We'd love you to keep up to date with all the content that we're putting out. Please let me know in the comments what car you've got which 1.9 TDI engine you have as well, because that'll help me to shape future content. I really want to cover the stuff that you are interested in and that you want to hear about. And please throw us up a like because that really helps us to get out there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.